I have wanted to make this video for a very long time, and that's my love-hate relationship with deer hunting. You're probably assuming that I would use country or folk music for the intro here, and most people would. Isn't that what you would want to do if you're making a video about hunting? Only this really isn't a video about hunting, not really. It's about a relationship with hunting, and it seems that my relationship is stuck in a rut. And yes, in that case, the pun is intended. Anyway, this song seemed more fitting for the mood I'm in about hunting these days. I found this instrumental music from that special place where video content creators can find music for their videos. The name of this instrumental piece is I Want to Fall in Love on Snapchat, and it's by Chris Zabriskie. I doubt Chris was thinking anything about deer hunting when he wrote this piece, but it's fitting for this video, and I can't really explain why other than it seems to be both thoughtful and inspirational with just a hint of anticipation. I started deer hunting when I was 19 years old, actually before that with my dad, um, but that was more or less just me kind of sitting there and dad hunting and me being cold, but excited nonetheless, usually falling asleep. But I started deer hunting uh, at about the age of 19 with uh, Denver Jackson and his brothers, and they were so kind and loving and wonderful to me to take me deer hunting, and that's when I killed my first deer. But I've been leery about making a video about deer hunting and my love-hate relationship with deer hunting as not to offend people who may disagree agree with deer hunting. I personally believe that deer hunting is great to keep animal populations high. It's a great time to watch animals and trust me, deer aren't too afraid of me at all in the woods because I'm really not that great of a hunter. And that's what this video is all about. My love-hate relationship with deer hunting. If you are a deer hunter, please watch this video. I really want to hear your comments in the comment section as we go about the day. But before we can even talk about my deer hunting issues, there's something far more alarming taking place to deer in our area and around the region. A virus is hammering the deer population locally. 300 deer in the region were found dead near water sources long before hunting season due to a virus transmitted to deer by biting flies. The situation is expected to improve after the first frost, but wildlife management experts are saying it's not been this severe for over a decade. The virus causes a fever, respiratory distress, a swollen tongue, and mouth. I've left a link in the description. So let me say this, I love deer and I hate to see anything suffer. Well, now first, the area that I'm hunting today is actually private property. It's a great piece of property to hunt. And just to uh, not to give away, it's private property, so I don't want to go into too much detail. I'm legally allowed to hunt there. But we are on Lewis, excuse me, we're on Jones Gap, which is in Hamilton County, Tennessee. The deer population is pretty healthy. Uh, the buck doe ratio uh, is still slanted towards the side of doe. Got probably a few more doe than bucks. But nevertheless, a lot of big deer are taken from this area. But for some reason, even though I've shot at a few, um, I've not been fortunate enough to bring one down over the past five years. And there's a few reasons why. First of all, one of the reasons why I can't seem to bring a deer down is I won't shoot anything that is four points or lower and I won't shoot a doe. It's not because of any type of personal convictions. It's just that if I'm going to get up early in the morning to go sit in the woods and be cold or hot or eaten up with mosquitoes or bugs or whatever the case is, I want a trophy animal. I don't want something silly. The other thing is that, well, I've changed equipment. I went from just a, a, a typical compound bow to a crossbow, uh, simply for the fact uh, my dad had gone to a crossbow and my son loved a crossbow, so I was sort of like, I joined the crowd. I'm not sure that was the best thing that I ever did when it comes to deer hunting. Now, let's say that you're into this video so far and you're going, Bill, this isn't one of your normal kind of videos. I'm used to seeing you and Carolyn on adventures and whatnot. It's a stroll down Corn Lane. Well, this is a little bit different of a video, but hang around because you never know. There might be something really, really funny or entertaining. So here's why I decided to make this video today. I've taken a class uh, that one of my very close friends and a friend of this channel for that matter, Ken Hartley is teaching at our church. It's a John Maxwell class and it's about connections. And one of the questions that he asked the other night was really, really good. And it, it was basically, what are you doing right now that you're getting better at, that you're spending time at every day? And the first thing that came to my mind isn't actually something that I do every day, but I do a lot. 
And of course, you know, you have your devotion time, you have your prayer time, and you have all these admirable things that you want to do every day. And most of the time you get to do them. But in, in my opinion, the question was not geared that direction. That would be kind of like talking about brushing your teeth. It's good to brush your teeth every day. No, this question was more like, what kind of things are you into that you do every day that you're getting better at? Well, I mentioned, and you know, we had to go around the room and answer the question. And I mentioned that I was getting better at editing film and being a better video content creator. By the way, that is a empty bottle that's bouncing around in case you're wondering, and this camera is mounted and I am driving safe, by the way, or safely. Um, but the, the question really stumped me. And the reason why is because yes, I am getting better, but it reminds me a lot of my love-hate relationship with deer hunting. Now, right now, when it comes to video editing and putting things on YouTube and putting things on Vidby, and now we're on, on another plat video platform, it's a lot of fun. But one of the things that bothers me about doing video content is that I never want it to become like my love-hate relationship with deer hunting. See, I've been seriously hunting for about five years now. I got out of hunting for close to 20 years and then got back into it recently, about five years ago, investing into the equipment gradually, usually buying stuff secondhand, not making it a big priority, but spending a lot of investment time into getting better at hunting. And yes, I've missed a few huge trophy deer, but that's like a fish story. You can either choose to believe that or not, but it really happened. I mean, big trophy deer, but I missed. But the question is, is how often do you invest and you go into something to where you just say, hey, you know what? This isn't working out. It works like this. Hunting for me is a hobby that connects me nostalgically to my dad, grandparents, and extended family and friends from childhood. I'm not the kind of person that has to finish the deal when it comes to killing a deer. And by that, I mean I'm not going hunting just to kill a deer. If that's all I wanted, I could sit on my back porch and kill them all day long. I live in the South and in the country. No, I'm interested in a trophy buck. And a trophy buck, well, they're highly intelligent. I've had three trophy bucks in my sight and I missed all three. I know exactly what I need to do to go to the next level in my hunting experience and begin connecting my arrows to those trophy bucks, but it requires me to spend more money and a lot more time. In fact, money isn't as much of an issue as time. And at 43, the question is, do I really want to invest that much more time to kill trophy bucks? And when are you going because you love what you're doing or because you're being successful at what you're doing? Let's take my YouTube channel. It's grown a lot. In fact, in the past year, we've increased by well over 150 subscribers. We're on different video platform where we have a whole slew of other subscribers. So we are being successful. So how do you make a decision to continue doing something in that you're not too successful with? And in the case of deer hunting, the trophy deer, where you finally achieve what you've been looking for. So is there any that you invest a lot of time in in which you're not seeing a whole lot of return? And have you ever asked yourself, is it worth it to keep doing this? Now, before we start with today's hunt, let me just say this. A lot of what you're going to see is going to be voiceover because you can't talk during uh, a hunt. You just can't whisper. It's not a good idea. You might hear me do some vocal calls for deer with one of these deer grunts that I have. You might hear me do something like that, uh, but I will be doing a lot of voiceover to talk about things that I'm thinking about while I'm hunting, and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you find some humor in it and maybe some cooperative learning self-help. I also wanna briefly turn the light off just to show you how dark it is when you begin a deer hunt. That's it. You can see my face just lit up by the screen here. It's very dark. I got a long walk into the woods. I hope I have a good day today. We'll see. The trail is so dark that even the light on my phone doesn't provide enough light to record me walking on the trail. But here's what I was thinking about. But first, there are no links in the description for what I'm about to say. It's my opinion. And as such, you're welcome to voice a counter argument in the comments. In fact, I always encourage you to add your opinions in the comments, but this time you really should because I'm giving my opinion based totally on what I think. So that's your open invitation to jump in and give me your opinion. And here's what I think about hobbies. 
A hobby is something that you do in your free time, but that's kind of vague, isn't it? I mean, we can create free time all over our calendar if we really want to. A hobby shouldn't put a burden on the family budget. And a hobby should be something that challenges you to be a better you, whatever that means. A hobby should provide the kind of relaxation you're needing in life. If you're an adrenaline junkie, then I guess it should be some type of adrenaline thing. But if you're needing rest and relaxation and quiet, then you should pursue rest and quiet, I guess. A hobby should be shared with people that you love. In other words, a hobby should be something you could pass down or share with someone else. And that's just my opinion, and those are just five things, but I think they're pretty important when it comes to hobbies. I could have made an entire video about hobbies. I mean, it's a big subject. I mean, people do weird stuff all the time now as far as a hobby. I mean, used to, people did knickknacks and and they built things, and now you see people on their phone 90% of the time, and that's sort of a hobby, I, I, I guess. You know, it's not a bad idea in the future, in fact for me to do a video about hobbies. It's a pretty interesting topic. But honestly, even making this list, I still can't determine what I should do about deer hunting. I've considered a few ideas. Carolyn and I love making videos, and we're not going to stop making videos anytime soon. But I wondered if it was possible to spin off another channel that's just about deer hunting. I thought about having guests and taking people with me deer hunting via video. What do you think? Well, here's what it would accomplish. It would allow me to spend more time hunting and not take away from creating videos or time with Carolyn. Plus, it would allow me to interact with other hunters. Not to mention that it might be possible to get sponsorship. It's funny because it's so dark, I can't even light anything up with the light. It's a long shot, but it's possible. And now it's morning and the hunt begins. Now, here's what you don't know as you look at this beautiful morning in the woods. I dislike this location. I hate it, in fact. I'm only at this location because of a series of events that actually placed me at this location. The primary reason that I'm at this location is because there's not a lot of people that hunt this area, but I hate everything about it. There are reasons why, some of which are just too much to discuss in this video, but it's all about confidence, isn't it? I know that this position is exposed. That's the first problem. I know that because of the way the hilltops surround me. My scent is rolling around everywhere. I know I'm good at calling big bucks up close, but not close enough for the shot, especially if there's an issue with scent. I know that I need certain equipment to hunt the way that I want to hunt and bring the big bucks in, but it simply can't happen right now. And this is what hurts hunters and fishermen alike. Confidence. You see, you have to believe that what you're going to do is going to be successful. Where you're at and what you're using. There's a few problems with that ideology, though. The first problem with that logic is that a lot of trophy bucks are taken within a hundred yards of the location I'm hunting. In fact, Jones Gap produces quite a few amazing deer, even during years like this when the overall deer population has taken a little dip due to disease. The second problem with my personal assessment is that unlike most hunters, I have my own private land to hunt. This is a pretty big deal and I'm extremely fortunate. And as far as all the things I need to bring down a big buck, well, that's not what the old timers would tell me. They would tell me I I just need to read more and learn more about how deer communicate. Yes, that's right. Less this and more this. Yes, there is a confidence problem, but it's not with my location, equipment, time, or money. It's spending more time learning how deer communicate. Essentially, learning more about deer. See, if you killed a trophy buck on every hunt, we wouldn't call it hunting. I guess we would call it trophy buck gathering, and it wouldn't be much of a sport. Here's the truth about my love-hate relationship with hunting. It does fulfill all the requirements of a solid, healthy hobby, at least by my standards, and it beats any given day in a cubicle. I do hunt in my free time, and I'm not taking time away from my family when I go hunting. Most of the time, they're sending me out the door to do so because they know how good I feel when I get back home. Trophy buck hunting doesn't hurt my family budget because I don't fall for hunting gimmicks, and I'm not trying to buy my trophy. Deer hunting does challenge me in many ways. It keeps me outdoors, which really helps with depression and anxiety. It forces me to pursue fitness because it's not easy walking up and down hills and climbing tree stands. I 
have to focus on being still and being quiet when I'm in the woods hunting, and that's not easy for guys like me. So it's a good mental exercise. I get to spend time with God and solve problems. Hunting can be stressful, but it's a good kind of stress that reduces daily stress. And hunting is a hobby that I share with my entire family. I've even taken Carolyn on a hunt. In fact, I'll share my hunting experiences with anyone who's willing to go with me. So this terrible spot, this terrible hunting location, this place that I loathe to hunt is only terrible because I haven't learned how to hunt here yet. And it's taken me time. It's forcing me to be patient with myself. And that's a good thing. This is where I had lunch between the morning and afternoon hunt recently. People pay big money or take a lot of pain pills for this kind of experience. The truth is that I have a great hobby and my relationship with hunting is really my fault. I'm just not a good listener and I need to do a better job connecting with my sport. So how about you? Do the flames of your hobby need to be fanned or do you have your hobby mastered? We want to hear about it. You're more than welcome to join our Facebook page at Bill Marion Live to send us pictures of your hobby and I want to thank you for watching this episode of A Nose for Life. Until next time, I'm Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life.